Hello and welcome to my channel, C Sharp, where we learn about Windows Forms application, WinForms, and we code in C Sharp. And the way we write our code, it can work on Visual Studio 2008, 2010, 2012, and 13. So if you use any of those, you can watch the, the videos and learn the code we're going to write. And in this video, we're going to learn about the timer. And we're going to have fun with the timer because we're going to make a stopwatch using the timer and the properties it has and the events. Alright, so let's get started. Let's all just go to file to create a new project. And we're going to call this program, this this project, um, stopwatch. Alright. So I hope you've all clicked on Visual C Sharp and then Windows Forms application and then you change the name. And let's click on OK. So once the program runs, we want to customize this window, right? We want it to have um, buttons, numeric, up, down, labels. That's mainly what we're going to use for this um, video, right? So let's go to Toolbox, pin it. If your Toolbox wasn't where mine is, you can just go to View. And you'll find your toolbox right here, right? Or, or you can just press Control Alt X and it'll take you to the same place. So let's get buttons, all right? Let's click the first button and we're going to um, copy and paste it three, three more times so we can have four buttons in total because we're going to need them for the pause, the start, stop, and continue, all right? And let's rename these buttons. So click on the first one, go to the text, and we call it its start. The sec then we go to this one, we'll call it pause. We'll call this one continue. And we'll call this one stop. And let's also just go back to the first one and let's rename what the button is called. But right now it's called button one, but we can't we won't be able to Remember that like continuously. Let's make it easier. We just call this one VTN start and we'll call this one VTN pause and this one VTN continue. Okay. And we'll call this one VTN stop. Alright. Once we've done that, can now go and take labels. Alright, so let's just scroll down and find we got the label. So we're gonna put one label here and let's rename this label. I will call it LBL. Hmm. What are we gonna call this label? We'll just call it hours. Hours with a double S, alright? Because if you use a single S, you get an error like this. You can see you're supposed to get an error but you didn't give an error but just we use double s then we'll go to font and we'll change the font to something more visible because in, th in this label we're going to use um it's going to be where our, our timer is all right and plus we, we want to be able to see the values in the timer easily. Alright, let's, let's click on 26 and change the text in it to 00. zero Alright, and let's just go ahead and copy paste that twice. So we can have, um, this is going to be the minutes, so let's change the name of that to, to minutes with the double S. I'll change this one to seconds the double s all right and then let's go and get numeric up downs so go back to your to your toolbox just click on numeric up this time we're going to have three of these all right copy this that twice again and then we're going to put them here all right and let's rename this one We'll call this one, we'll have it as the seconds, right? So, 
type what I type. I'll call this one. Oops. Change the name of that one. Main. Change the name of this one. Two. Alright. Then let's get three more labels just to know so we can be able to to know what's what, like when the program runs, right? We just go and change the text. So this will be the hours. This will be then we just we can copy paste that instead of getting more labels. And this will be the minutes. So let's type in minutes. And this is gonna be the seconds. Once we have all those ready, we can go to the code. Okay. Um, so just double click on let's double click on the start, and let's. Um, since the code is a lot, I'm going to copy paste that so we don't spend a lot of time on the video, on typing. We spend more on the content. So I'm gonna copy paste code I had um, previously written, which is here. And this is for the start button, all right? So we're going to put all that code in here in the start button. And then we're going to go. There's something we forgot. We forgot the main thing. We forgot the timer. So let's look for, let's look for, sorry, for the timer. Okay, and here's the timer. Just double click that. Or you can just put it there. Right, and let's change the name of the timer. Let's call it stopwatch. Okay, and go to your intervals, and we want it to be one thousand. Don't forget to change that to one thousand. Okay, and let's go back to the code. All right, and let's go here and write these variables. We want um, seconds, we want minutes, and we want hours. All right. Because we're going to use these three variables for our information, right? And then we get the name of this button. Copy that, and post, and paste it here, right? And then we need um, the timer code, right? So let's copy and paste this. And I'm going to explain what all this code does. I just don't want to have to write it again because it takes quite a bit of time, which we, which we could skip. Yeah. And then again, we need this, the name of this. All right. All right. This code. There's a few code that I'm gonna I'm gonna um, write myself, like the code for the stop button. So we like double click the stop button, and the code for that one is we're gonna call the name of the stopwatch of the timer rather, which is stopwatch, and we're gonna say stop. Okay. And then um, we're gonna use the numeric up downs where our information is, is going to be written and we're going to say it enabled to true. What this means is that the text or the numbers in the numeric up downs can be accessed now. Now, now like you're able to put information in them once we set the enable to true. And as I explain more you're going to see where when we start the program, the enable is set to false, right? And then what we want, we want to set the name, I mean the, the text in, the, in our labels, and our labels being here, these ones, we want to set the text back to, to zero, zero, how they were previously, right? So, because like during when you start the program, definitely the text will remain at zero zero. So now when it stops, you want it to go back to how it was previously. Okay, and that's why we're doing this. 
and then we're going to do the same. That's just basically it for the stop button, right? Then we're going to need um, to write code for the continue button as well. So let's double click that and just write the, the name of the timer. And we're going to say enabled to true, meaning the type, meaning that all the controls, like the timer, can continue counting down, right? And then we need to write code for the pause, which is just basically the name of the, of the timer. And we're going to just tell it to to be on false, falsely enabled, so that information in that in, in in the stopwatch or the stopwatch counting down nothing happens in the stopwatch when we set it to false all right then by us continuing we're setting it to true meaning it picks off from where it was set to false okay and let me go up and explain the button the start button basically now when we start the program we are setting the numeric um up down to false by by me by us setting it to false it means that you won't be able once the program starts once we once we click on this start button the information here won't be able to change like you won't be able to now um say like if you set the the hours to one hour once the program is, is running you can't go and set it to two hours you have to stop the program right so by it saying enable false it means that you can't tamper with the information in this in this control and, and we do that for all the updates right then we also go now to the timer and now we're saying if the hours is equal to zero and the minutes is equal to zero and the second is equal to zero we want the stopwatch to stop right meaning that if the timer is is like how it is now after running the program, that means that the stopwatch is is at the original place, meaning that the time is ended. All right. So now we'll say if that happens, you will stop the timer. Okay. And once the timer is stopped, we want a message box to show um, reading this information, telling us the countdown is is ended. And this is just my touch to it. Um, and I'll show you how you can change that to whatever you want it to be and then now we want information to be entered into the numeric up down so we're setting the enable to true now you're going to be able to type or rather scroll up and down to put a new number All right and then um we set the hours to zero zero to how they were original All right then now here is where the main code is All right and here we say if if this is not happened like if the, if the countdown isn't over all right if the hour is not at zero and the minute is not at zero and the second is not at zero we want it to do this information we want the seconds if the seconds are less than one we want the, the, the numbers here to go to 59 and once they go to 59 we said that um, we want it to continue subtracting. This operator being minus equals, it means the decrement. Decrement meaning that you're subtracting time from the, from the timer, right? And then we do the same for the minutes, where we where you can see there's a decrement as well. And then the hours we say, this exclamation mark means not. So it says if hours is not equal to zero, if the time is not at zero, the time is not over. We want the hours to be to be decremented, right? So if there's four four hours inside here, we want once the the time in here goes to zero, we want it to subtract one one hour from that, right? That's basically what that means. And this just means that um, we want the variables. We use this as a, as a variable. If you remember where where we typed it here, right? These are the variables, and we want the text in the label to be equal to the text in the variables. 
because they're using the variables to subtract and for the decrement and everything. Right. And that's that basically does it. And we forgot one thing in the stop button. We also want a button, the start button to be enabled as well. Right. So we, we want to be able to to use the start button again. And let's run the code and see if it works. All right. So we run the program. And let's set the minutes to, let's say, four minutes. We start the program. All right. See what happens now. This button is disabled. So the enable is set to false once we start it. Now, you can't start it again. All right. That's why we want it to be set to false. And you can't be able to change the time as the countdown is working. Let's try the pause button. Once we pause, exactly, the timer should stop. So the program is working well. And then if we want to continue from where we where we paused, we press on the continue button. And then we see that it, it continues counting down. And if we, if we want it to stop, it stops. Now you see the start button is the enable is set to true. So now you're able to start the, the, uh, the countdown again. And you're able to change the values in this numeric up down so the program works how it's supposed to work and the code has been explained now let's have fun with it. let's change how this counter looks to make it a bit more personal all right so you can um, just go to back let's change the background of the window all right so you can go to background click on it then we import all right click on import and then go to pictures I'll choose that picture and I'll put it and I'll say OK. Right, and it loads. And change the background image here from tile to stretch. So by by us setting it to stretch, it fits into the window. Right? So even if you drag it down or however, you can still see that it's stretching with the program. Right? And then you can change how big you want your start to look or anything just by font. Just go through the program and see how you can do. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope you've learned how to use the timer. And we've made a fun program where we have a timer and we can start it, pause it, stop it, and we continue from where we stopped. Um, please subscribe, share the video. Um, thank you.